Rahim, I am here with uh, Dr. Omer uh, Zaid again, and uh, today we're going to deal with politics, um, if that's okay with you. And uh, there is so much happening in the world right now, and mm. I, um, what I want to benefit from you, and I, I, and then inshallah others will also want to, is how you analyze events. Mm. Obviously you're reading the events, you're analyzing them, and uh, even though maybe you've not written a book about it, but we're going to try to dive into your mind today <laughs> and oh, see how you analyze the events, and then I'm going to show you all these events that are happening in the world today, and it's mm -hmm. like all of a sudden there's so many events happening, and mm -hmm. uh, well, because I'm in the U.S., and so I'm more also aware of some of the local things that are going on. Sure. And, uh, and, and you probably are too, but uh, when you put all these together, uh, I want to know, okay, so there would be uh, obviously the analysis of individual events, but then I know you'd like to synthesize everything, so we're going to then try to see. And what I want the viewers to understand from this exercise is not just about today's particular events, but how they can take that analysis that you teach us to do, because I'm going to ask you to kind of like dive into, okay, how, what is your process of analyzing and how we can learn and take something from that whole process. Oh dear. Okay. So I, uh, I, I do it instinctively. So I'm not so sure that I can analyze my process. It just sort of happens. Well, uh, let's just see where it goes and uh, mm. what it comes out with inshallah and then i'll put my two cents in too because sure. a lot of the events that have that are happening have to do with some of the sayings of the prophet and i'd like to share those too and okay. then see how you bounce off of those mm -hmm. uh, statements okay so this is a kind of a free association experiment <laughs> <laughs> yes that's right <laughs> that's right okay okay so uh let's see if i can now uh, start uh, sharing my screen. Uh, mm. Do you see my screen? Yes, I do. Okay. So, Dr. Omer, the first thing that I find uh, very interesting that's happening across the country is that police officers are resigning, like left, right, and center. And they're resigning mm. for different reasons. Some are resigning because they think that now, with some of the reforms that are done, they will be called into question. Others are resigning because they feel that they're not being valued uh, as, as cops. Uh, and, uh, and so, you know, um, uh, there are police officers across the U.S. have quit their jobs in recent days. And so, as you can see that, so this is one of the things that's been happening. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that's been happening is there is a second rise of COVID-19 in the U.S. Mm -hmm. It was not very prevalent, for example, in Texas. And all of a sudden in Texas, you know, everyone's getting it. Yes. Uh, um, over here, I also wanted to just point to this uh, headline here. Several police officers leave department after Floyd's death. So... Uh, other things that are happening that are very interesting very quickly, and then I'll let you dictate how this conversation goes. Trump pl peace plan that he has for the Middle East, the deal of the century, uh, plan puts hundreds of biblical sites under Palestinian rule. So this is kind of like, you know, they're not very happy with that, obviously. Um, mm. and evangelical see Trump's plan as proof of Israel kissed by God analysis. Um, over here, I don't know, uh, U.S. and Russia, uh, the, um, the U.S., one of the U.S. bombers went really close to the Russian border and then Russia sent its planes and then in terrifying moment, U.S. bombers intercepted by Russian jets. And then almost the vice versa happened just right after that, where um, the U.S. Uh, F-22 jets uh, intercept Russian bombers near Alaska. So they did it mm -hmm. to them, and then they did it to them. 
while uh, Israel is getting re ready to annex uh, parts of the West Bank uh, with a magic wand of some sort, and uh, these things are happening, Turkey drew up plans to invade Greece and Armenia. This is becoming a big issue. Um, India and China border. Now, this is where I was mentioning that there's a saying of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. La hind illa bis seen. Uh, India will not be destroyed except by China. Mm -hmm. Is what the Prophet the said. The Prophet actually this, said that. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Well, and they've so, never got along. The two cultures always clashed uh, despite their... Uh, despite their um, sort of association uh, through Buddhism, the cultures, the people still uh, just hate hate each other, and um, both both cultures have their own caste systems, and uh, I don't know which one is more uh, fascist in their uh, identity with this um, caste system. Uh, you know the whether. The Chinese and the the Hindus, but uh, you know when 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 proud people come to loggerheads, there's going to be blood, and mm. um, that, that's what's taking place here. The Chinese historically have never been imperial. Okay, mm. uh, this is a new venture, and I don't think it's China behind it. I think they are manipulated into this. Um, uh, in, into this expansion of the Chinese influence. Mm. Uh, we know that the, the Chinese are persecuting all the religions. Uh, there, there seems to be some favoritism uh, going on uh, with respect to the Catholic Church only, but this uh, affects only certain Catholic institutions. And uh, there is certainly a favoritism that affects the, the Jewish institution, especially the Chabad, the Chabad in uh, China. You have 13 operating Chabad houses in China as mm. we speak. Okay, so and uh, Chabad is obviously an, a, a religious organization, but it is also one of the organizations that stands behind the political scene. Mm. Chabad is the seat of the deep, deep state, okay, all over the world. Mm. So, for example, they run the Russian mafia, okay? Everybody wants to blend the, blame the mafia on the Italians, but the biggest mafia are the Jews, and they've always been, okay? Mm. And um, it's not that the Italians don't have a sophisticated organization, they do. But that was also founded by uh, Mazzini, who picked up an ancient uh, organization, secret organization on the, uh, the island there of, um, uh, what's it called, where the, the mafia have their Sicily. And uh, he organized it according to Freemasonic principles uh, uh, 200 years ago. And um, uh, they've run with it ever since. But even that is under the Jewish Tan, you see. And so wherever you're going all over the world, you see this Chabad uh, Jewish influence. And it's not necessarily primarily Jewish. And when we think about the terms uh, Jew, it doesn't mean Judaic. It doesn't mean uh, the Ummah of Musa, not anymore. Now, in the minds of people, it may... Uh, have this and people may have this impression, but these are Jews who are not Jews, mm -hmm. and even that is a metaphor. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. uh, so and uh, Allah used it because uh, it was the only way to get the point across, okay, uh, to those who think. To right. those who the think, the Quran actually uses two terms you might be interested in knowing one word is Bani Israel, yes, and the other word is Yahud, which Yahud. Yes literally means what we call Jews, but Bani Israel is the, the actual people. Yes, yes. And uh, so, one, one refers uh, to a tribe, the other one refers to a religious uh, imposition on the tribe. Yes. Okay. So uh, you, you have both, but the Jews who are now running the world are not, are of neither persuasion. They're using, uh, yeah, you can say Yehudi, uh, but in the terms of a religious 
uh, um, a, a religious context, but this context changed after the son of God named Titus destroyed Israel 2,000 years ago. Okay, okay, Titus, that's and, right. That's and, the second fall of the temple. Yes, <laughs> Titus, the son of uh, Vespasian, and they joined forces with Josephus and the Alexanders, and Josephus brought along with him the Nabataeans, whom Herod, who was not a, a Bani Israel, forced to convert uh, to Judaism, Yahudi, okay? So uh, this religion was false before Titus. It was vain before Titus. This is why Isa came to put an end to it, because that's what he did. Mm-hmm. He put an end to it, and then he told everybody who listened to him, those uh, ba- those of Bani Israel who would listen to him, wait for Muhammad, wait for the Holy Spirit, wait for the Comforter, because that's what Paracletus means. It me- and he called him Ahmad, mm-hmm. in, that's in the Aramaic. In the Greek, it's Comforter, it's Paracletus, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, the Christians have con- con- contorted this whole thing under the Jewish Gnosticism, and they've turned this Holy Spirit into um, uh, Mary, <laughs> in a matter of speaking. They've turned her into Sophia. That's why in Constantinople you have the, uh, uh, the, the, great, Sophia, the great church there called the uh, uh, Sophia. Sophia represents Holy Spirit. It's supposed to represent uh, Shekinah, okay? And... Um, all of this has been conflated and been distorted at the time of Isa under the influence of uh, the uh, initial the, the initial onset of Christianity, which took place under the influence of the Flavians and Josephus and the Alexandrian Gnostics and these Nabataeans who all came along and they created this new religion to sort of pacify the region. Uh, under this new Son of God influence. And all of this was then put on the shoulders of Isa, and he's going to spit it all out, spit them all out of his mouth on the Day of Judgment, okay? That's just the way it is. And uh, the Christians who don't want to accept this, well, let the dead bury the dead. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So, um, anyway, I'm getting back to uh, this Chinese uh, thing. Under the influence of the Chabad, you see this yeah, this new Yahudism, this new uh, uh, take on the Bani Israel that is no longer Bani Israel. So we're talking about a religious influence that changed after Titus destroyed the temple because there is no uh, Judaism without the temple. It's gone. Okay. And that's why they want to restore it at least ostensibly, okay, because they want to pretend to bring it back. <clears throat> so they had to create a new religion, you see, because the temple was destroyed. And the, period, the, the pe- people were scattered. There was, there's some debate over whether or not there was this, this dispersion. Uh, there was and there wasn't, okay. Uh, a million Jews were murdered, uh, but they already had this influence spread throughout the Mediterranean because of certain missionary work, which was already taking place at the time. You can mm-hmm. find all of this information in, uh, uh, I think it's uh, Israel Shamil's book on mm-hmm. the Jews. Uh, mm-hmm. I forgot the name of the book now, but it's all pretty much spelled out there. The history is known. People just don't read about it. Mm-hmm. Um and it's just like the history of this of this Christian uh, uh, birth, the Christian, the true Christian nativity under Roman influence. It's there. The history is there. People just don't read about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you bring certain things up, like I did as a Christian minister uh, years ago, uh, you get thrown out because it uh, people don't want to hear the truth. There's this cognitive dissonance that comes into play, and uh, uh, it, it makes them feel like it makes them feel like the fools they really are. You mm. see, and so they don't want to confront this, so they just throw you away. 
And that's what happened to me. It happens to a lot of people who bring up the truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Jews had to recreate themselves after the destruction of the temple. And uh, that's when this influence that began in Babylon really began to bear uh, fruit because then you had the uh, birth of the rabbinical Judaism, which is has nothing to do right, with... Right, right. Very not, good point, it, yes. It, it has nothing to do with Bani Israel. It has nothing to do with the uh, ancient Hebrews. It has nothing to do with uh, Musa. All, all that they refer to there is ostensible. It's a facade, okay? Because the, uh, the true... Uh, uh, rabbinical Judaism has nothing to do with that. They mm -hmm. throw away the Gospels, they throw away the Al Torah, they carry it around like a holy relic, you know. Yes. Uh, yes. But they don't follow it. They follow what they follow is the is, is the Talmud. Okay, and the Talmud is their opinion, and this is why they were <laughs> this is why they were condemned by Isa. He said, right. you're, and you're, over you're, here, I want to make the point that we've been making many times, yeah. that the Torah is equivalent to like Quran. Yes. And yes. the Talmud is equivalent to Islamic law, fiqh. Something like that, yes. Yeah, well, yeah. There, there's, some, um, there's facsimiles, you can say, uh, in, in, in that sense. And so the, the point I was trying to make was, in Surah Juma, Allah says, that you know that they did away with the book of Allah, right? Yes. And started focusing yes. on other things. Yes. Which are an extension of the religion, but it's not the core. The core was it, the the book yeah, of Allah. They, they've done away with the core. The and, the morals are are gone. You know. And, they're, and they're, you've done the same thing in many ways. Yes. Muslims have done the same thing. They've abandoned the Islamic uh, moral code that is very implicit in the Quran. It's very clear. Okay. And like a good example of that would be like Islamic banking. Like it's an oxymoron, <laughs> right? You have Islamic and banking. I mean, the, the, yes. yes, you can argue it's an oxymoron at least. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out that yes. uh, because the Quran points that out. Well, yes. You know, uh, yes. and so anyway, uh, yes, please continue. So they they recreated their um, their their Judaism in this rabbinical mirror, and this rabbinical mirror has everything to do with the, the Kabbalah, and the Kabbalah at one time was an oral tradition uh, that became then modified. Now, when I say oral tradition, there's an oral tradition that comes from all the prophets that is only. Uh, that only goes to his immediate disciples, okay? And uh, even Islam has this. Uh, the prophet had certain things he only shared with his immediate companions. And um, uh, these are not, uh, these things are not commonly known. So there was also this oral tradition in the Kabbalah. It was called the, the Book of Ibrahim or the Book of Abraham, mm. uh, but it was never written down, okay? And this is traditional Oriental culture because the oral traditions are a matter of dignity, okay? And if you study the indigenous cultures all over the world, the oral traditions are very important, okay? For example, you go to the Igbo tribe or one of the African tribes or a Native American tribe, and there's a man who's the keeper of the history, and he usually has some sort of staff. And the staff has marks on it, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, this is not writing. These are marks that indicate a certain thing that helps them to remind, to, to help it. to remember a linear history, okay? And it brings it to mind. So just as uh, people have the capacity, the mental capacity to memorize the Quran or all the Hadith, People also traditionally have had the uh, capacity to keep the history of their nation orally in mind and transmitted from one generation to another. So mm. the book of Abraham was like this. It was the oral tradition handed down from Adam 
through the prophets, through and then finally come into uh, uh, the ancient Israel, <laughs> the ancient Israel, the Hebrews, uh, through Musa uh, by uh, Abraham. Okay, it was called the Book of Abraham, but it was actually the Book of Adam. Okay, um, after the Babylonian captivity and this business with Harut and Marut and uh, the other Magi in the region who were, were not Jews, but the Jews blended with them, those Jews in exile who chose not to follow Musa, okay, okay. and there was a large percentage of them who did. Uh, these are the ones that they formed together, and they formed what you could say 3,000 years ago, they, or 25,000 years, 2,500 years ago, this uh, Illuminati, the or, Ill, original Illuminati core of the Magi, and this is the core that the Prophet warned Kozru about. This is the group, okay? Yes. They are now running the world after all these years. Now, remember, the jinn live about 500 years, so that's, that's only four or five generations ago. It's mm -hmm. not a long time in right. the terms of a jinn lifespan. OK, and in terms of divine law, it's only a couple of days. Mm. OK, so, um, you know, this is this is easy to comprehend. So when I look at headlines like this, this is how I'm thinking. Mm. I'm thinking in these terms. Now, nobody does that. Mm -hmm. You see, so when you have a conversation with me, you're not having a conversation with a normal human being <laughs> okay i'm eccentric in mm. it in terms of tawhid in terms you know if i sat down at i could probably get along with the boys at the corner coffee shop with their sheath pipes mm. uh, but i and i might be able to lead some of them into this realm of comprehension but for the most part i would lose them you know, mm. If there were 100 of them sitting there, I would lose 98 of them. Mm. Okay. They, they would walk away and, and not be able to comprehend this because they have no foundation. So, Dr. Omar, one of the things I was thinking about this, that if this inflares up, uh, yes. especially the India-Chinese crisis, yes. that puts the world uh, labor mar market for the big companies where they get cheap labor through India and yes. China, all the yes. big companies. These, like the iPhone, uh, the, you know, all these big corporations, they would be in quite a jeopardy in terms of dealing with this crisis or this war. That I think they, now the saying of the Prophet, uh, uh, it's not like the most authentic thing in terms of the chain of narrations, but, uh -huh. it, but it is narrated by the teacher of Imam Bukhari. Imam Bukhari is known as the one of the most voracious yes. uh, or the most authentic of narrators. Yes. And this is his teacher yes. narrating this saying of the Prophet. Ah. Yes. So it's at least somewhere in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm also thinking that this would probably severely affect a lot of the big companies uh, in a very negative way. And uh, anyway, that's just a, a side thought. And if you wanted to say anything about that. Well, you know, I remind you again, the Iblis doesn't care about any of this. OK, so these uh, these people who run these big corporations, they really don't understand who they're working for. Mm. He Iblis hates them. Mm. Iblis doesn't care how many of them he destroys. OK. Mm. They think that uh, they've got this idea that they're, I, I've met people who say they'd rather rule in hell with, with Satan mm. than to go to this pious place where they imagine angels sitting, you know, singing praises to God and playing on harps, which is another foolish imagination. Right. Anyway, um, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that this same organization, uh, through Chabad as one of their uh, major branches for management of things legal and illegal, 
they're running China. It's not the chairman. Mm. Okay. This current president, he's not running things. He's just like any other president, uh, including the president of Pakistan. He's just a figurehead. Okay, they have no power. Mm. They, or if they do have power, it's limited and it can be removed at a moment's notice mm. based on what these people decide to do. Mm. And they will goad these leaders in certain directions that will take the entire world closer and closer to this conflagration. All the time, these globalists think that they're uh, putting together a new world order. What mm. they're doing is they're putting together a new world disorder that is bringing everything closer and closer to uh, destruction, ultimate destruction. But they think they're reordering things so they can run everything themselves. Satan let them lets them run with this delusion. Okay, mm -hmm. and for a temporary time, and the Quran makes this very clear, Allah gives them over to this strong delusion. Mm. And for a few short years, a few short decades, they do run their lives and they do run the slaves who are assigned to them. Okay, mm. and most of the people who are now trying to get out of the uniform called the police uniform are their slaves. Mm. You see, and they don't understand this. They think that they're working for Lady Liberty. And mm. even if they're working for Labor li <laughs> Lady Liberty, they're still enslaved. Spiritually right. and emotionally and metaphysically, they are enslaved. Okay. These After are we had that conversation yesterday where you talked about the yes. Statue of Liberty. I went on the internet and uh. found several articles trying to prove, well, and suggesting that Lady Liberty is a male, like you had been saying, but you said you were talking about how it's actually both. She's both. Uh, it's an yeah. androgyn. Okay. But, uh, uh, but I found that very, very interesting, um, yeah. The, yeah. the whole history of the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, uh, it's true. That's what it is. And people don't understand it, you see. And uh, so if they want to hide under her skirts, well, you see, Chabad is hiding under her skirts. They mm. don't honor uh, Lady Liberty in mm. their religious uh, conversations they hold in private, but they use Lady Liberty to enslave the Goyim, who are really mm. are stupid. Okay? Mm. They really are stupid. Okay? Mm. And even Khaldun makes that very clear. Hmm. And the Quran makes it very clear, too. He says they're worse than animals. Hmm. Animals are not that stupid because animals follow fitra. You see, hmm. humans who get attached to these strong delusions, they've lost what they what uh, uh, the, uh, the philosopher uh, Kant called sensus communis which mm. is it's the closest thing you can get to this um, uh, concept of fitra, inborn uh, common sense. Okay, so it, it's gone, it's out the window. So all, these, all this patriotic nonsense is in service of uh, one form of vain religious uh, uh, idolatry or another. And mm. that includes uh, Chabad. Chabad is also following uh, in their inner circles a vain, form of idolatry mm. and their idolatry is the ultimate form of humanism that raises the man to the divine nature because their 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 uh, uh, their their goal is to retrieve <laughs> get get a hold of this now <laughs> this is really crazy stuff this is crazy jewish thinking <laughs> okay Okay, um, their goal is to retrieve the divine spark that Allah left behind when he created the universe, hmm. the material world. So, you know, there are two universes where we, Jana is one and this material universe is the other. And in this material universe, we have the uh, seven universes. And science is now beginning to discover, yes, there are all these other dimensions. And they're beginning to, to see. And everything that's in the Quran about cosmology is beginning to uh, uh, unfold itself. Yes, that's in, right. In scientific reality. 
But the Jews are diving into materialism, especially these uh, Chapad uh, Jews and uh, these, um, uh, these um, what do you call the Sabbateans and the Frankists who follow them. And uh, these people who go into the what they call the Lorianic uh, element of the Kabbalah, um, they are trying to redeem this divine spark. And they've got the crazy idea brought in by Sabbateanism that the only way to redeem it is to become evil mm. because the material universe is evil. So you immerse yourself in sin in order to redeem it, to define to find this divine spark that's somewhere hidden in there. You see, mm. <laughs> you see how crazy they are? They're yes. bloody nuts. Okay. Mm. So uh, uh, anyway, they're trying to do this. And part of doing this is to gain control, complete control of the world, the mm. materialism. They want absolute dominion. Mm. And in order to get this absolute dominion, you're, we're talking about absolute tyranny. Mm. And absolute tyranny lives in fear of anyone who doesn't obey. Right. See? So they have to control everybody, and that's all part of this new Bill Gates thing with the vaccine, and they want to inoculate everybody with little nanobots and all this sort of crazy nonsense in 5G. It's all destructive. They are destroying themselves, and they don't know it. Mm -hmm. See? They are destroying the world, and the Quran says Allah is coming to destroy those who destroy the world. Okay, mm -hmm. so we know how this is going to end. Okay, we already know how it's going to end. But in any case, you know, the Jabad will push the chairman of the Chinese party to, you know, build this road that's going to bring everybody into Tel Aviv. Uh -huh, and uh, right. everything into Tel Aviv and if the Hindus uh, get upset along the way well you know we just push okay just push keep yeah. on pushing don't let anything stand in your way China was never like this China was always traditional Chinese the ancient tradition of the I have I, I developed a actually a complete course on this several years ago but it was never taught. I'm going to try and turn it into a video lecture. The ancient Chinese tradition is pure monotheism. Oh, wow. Okay. It's pure monotheism. And this Chabad communism has destroyed it, you see. And mm. as we said before, as I've, I, I've, I, I've taught you before, Chabad, Freemasonry, modern Jewry is all under the influence of the Jesuits mm. who are pretending to be Catholics. You see, mm. <laughs> they they are the supreme uh, Jews because they have they they have mastered the art of pretending to be somebody and somebody that they're not. And this mm. is what an actor does, is it not? Yes. Of course. This is why we have Hollywood. And it's why their agents, their CIA agents, are all over Hollywood, mm -hmm. making sure that the narrative focuses on everything else but them. Mm -hmm. you see? And so we can talk about the Jews, we can talk about the Chinese, we can talk about this, that, and everything, but we don't talk about the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. Nobody on primetime TV is talking about the real history of the Jesuits, mm -hmm. are they? No. no. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even, you know, you, you, you know, this, uh, what's his name, Alex Jones, he came out, he's talking about this, that, but he won't go anywhere near the Jesuits, you see. Nor does he oh. even talk about Israel. Yes, no. So the, 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 there are certain things that are not talked about. Everything else mm -hmm. is allowable because it creates, it creates a false sense of security in those who are talking about it, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I don't have this delusion uh, so that when I look at these uh, events, I, and I, I, you know, I already know I don't have any influence, you see, over these things. Uh, what is coming will come, and we can't do anything about it, okay? Mm. Except for what I've taught you before is within your own reach. So you keep trying to do what is just in your own uh, 
little universe that Allah has given to each and every one of us, okay? And we do that until we face the moment of death. So that then, you know, the, the death angel can say, okay, you've done a good job. You pass. Mm. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what we're looking for, okay? Because um, uh, this is a pass-fail test. All of our life here on earth, it's a pass-fail test, yeah. you know. And, yeah, there are degrees of, you know, passing, and, and, there, are, and there are degrees of failure, you know, mm-hmm. just like there's several, you know, several layers of hell, there's several layers of paradise. So all of this, uh, for those of us who are confirmed in our faith, uh, that allows us what we call asakina. So that uh, when the knock at 3 a.m. comes on the door and uh, the, the men in the boots and, the, you know, the belts and the badges and all this sort of thing, they come and they want to take you away. You say, Alhamdulillah, my time has come. That's right. And when they stick the knife in you, you can say, thank you very much. You've just sent me to paradise. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. You think? Yeah. Um, so, so China, I hope that uh, China, India have a problem. Uh, yes. India and Pakistan are having a problem. Yes. By the way, there's a saying of the Prophet, which uh, my uh, Pakistani brothers don't like me repeating, but the Prophet oh. said, La yukhribu sin, uh, sin, uh, sin illa bil hind. Sind is the area, of, is, is actually Pakistan. It's, uh-huh. But there, nowadays there's a province in Pakistan called Sind that aligns mm-hmm. with India, but it was bigger than... Mm-hmm. And so the prophet says, and back, uh, I- Sindh, the original wor- word, will not be destroyed except by India. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so there's a saying that India will be destroyed except by China, and Sindh, which is now Pakistan, mm-hmm. uh, will not be destroyed except by India. Mm. So uh, anyway, that is just something to keep in mind. So there might be another war with the way things are brewing between India and Pakistan, too. Yeah, uh, 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 you know, Sheikh uh, Imran Hussein, he had a vision a couple of years back that really startled him. And uh, yeah, he made a few announcements, which I think were untimely. But the essence is that what he saw is probably true. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was uh, the uh, nuclear destruction of Pakistan. Oh, wow. I didn't. didn't okay. Didn't yeah. Know. Well, you know, this, I mean, he, he didn't hide this. He made a public announcement of it. He even gave a date. And I think that was his mistake. But we all make mistakes. Okay. So uh, may Allah have mercy on all of us for yes. our errors. Yes. Okay. But he had this vision. And it was not unlike the vision that I uh, shared with you two weeks ago when I had this dream and I saw right, exactly. Earth yes. split from yes. southern Michigan all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. It just split, and there was a lake of fire. Mm. Now, if, 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 geologically, this is not possible, okay, uh, for there to be a lake of fire that huge. It just that uh, doesn't happen, yeah. especially along the Mississippi Basin. But... Um, uh, there is an element of truth with that when we were talking about the country splitting, the land splitting apart, and uh, there's hellfire waiting to receive the people. Mm. Uh, of course, the, uh, and, uh, this is what's taking place. All hell is breaking loose in America now, and mm. this was also as planned. Uh, and let me just say one more, well, probably it's not just one more thing, but what comes to mind right now is that these uh, events that occur, they they have the outward appearance uh, for the elitist of being controlled. Mm. But what happens is that they actually get beyond their control. Mm. And um, so far they've been able to rein the forces back in because everything has been under the control pretty much of the military uh, forces uh, for the last uh, few centuries. But when you have massive geological uh, disturbances or massive, you know, hurricanes or anything of that nature, 
this is beyond military control. When nature reacts as nature does, no one can do anything about it. Mm. What you can do is respond if you're still left alive. Mm. Okay. Uh, so what's coming uh, of this nature is, is we're, talk, we're talking about unimaginable catastrophes, whether they're nuclear, you know, they imagine, they, can put, they put on a computer screen some sort of imagination of what a nuclear catastrophe is, but no one's really experienced it yet. Right, that's true. Hiroshima and Nagasaki, these were small events hmm. compared to what can take place now. Hmm. The, these uh, these uh, huge weapons they have now, I, you know, are uh, unimaginably destructive. And now there's another element here that, that uh, we don't know about because everything that we do know about is already 30 to 50 years behind what they've actually technologically developed in mm. secret. Okay. Mm. So we're talking about 5G, 6G, 9G rollouts, all this sort of thing. They probably have 20 and 30G <laughs> mm. already working somewhere. And uh, the fact of the matter is that another reason that the military and the police are beginning to fall apart is because they're, they, they're the ones using these systems and they're the ones getting sicker and sicker from them as, as the decades go, go by. They're mm. the ones developing the disturbances and the, and the cancers from these, these uh, 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 instruments, from this technology. And what is up there in space, we don't know. Okay? Mm. We, we have some idea of what is taking place in 5G uh, uh, up in space and what uh, this fella, uh, the Tesla company, is trying to do. This uh -huh. crazy boy out in California, little spoiled brat with uh, trillions of dollars in his pocket. Um, what's it, what's his name now? Is the guy sending Elon up? Elon Musk. Huh? Oh yeah, Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he he's 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 crazy. By the way, people in America, especially um, new businesses, striving young entrepreneurs, they love him. They idealize him. Yeah. Idol. <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he, he is this idol, and uh, he's, he's, uh, he represents um, an, an element of uh, a, the messianic figure uh, to a certain group of people, and they will follow him, they will idolize him, and they will go right to hell along with him, you see. Uh, there's nothing in him or in his life that glory or what is truly divine at all. Is absolutely devoid of it. Okay, so its character is uh, completely one-sided and it's completely materialist, material, and in, in nature, and that's what they want to do. So he's an element of uh, this uh, this entire push to uh, to to dominate the material world, but with the wrong moral take. You see, it doesn't matter what the collateral damage is here. And this is another Jesuit, uh, 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 a Jesuit idea. Mm. So for, for you, you do something for the sake of the greater good. Okay. So your sins are forgiven as long as you're serving the greater good. You see, this is a uh, casuistry. This mm -hmm. is typical Jesuit uh, Catholic action casuistry, and it, it, it is based on the Kabbalah immersion mm -hmm. in this organic uh, Kabbalism, which is totally uh, satanic in nature. Or Would this also be included, you know, when, when uh, the Quran mentions in Surah Ibrahim, when Satan says, you know, yeah, I promised you, but I went against my promise in that mm -hmm. end scene. Part of that, is it also that maybe he deluded them that maybe they're doing the right thing? Yeah. Uh, and Stilgaf mentions uh, towards the end, actually one of the last verses. Mm -hmm. uh, sabuna, those people who thought they were doing good. I mean, this is the word. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sabuna annahum yuhsinuna suna'a. 
But the word that's used is manufacturing, that they thought they were doing good, but doing good was the word manufacturing. Yes. But anyway, um, yeah, so we have Pakistan in India, we have China in India, we have this chaos in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also certain things are going on with Turkey. Um, Turkey and Greece are not getting along. Uh, Greece along. is getting, <laughs> Greece has been, uh, can you repeat that? They never got along. Okay, so they also never got along. Yes. So if Greece capitulates, Turkey will be bigger threat to Israel than Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, yesterday I was reading that um, Greece is getting ready, uh, like militarily, to deal with Turkey. Uh, and uh, uh, the Greek uh, prime minister in Israel says, Turkey, a threat to regional peace. Um, and then, of course, uh, Israel is is announced that it's going to annex parts of the West Bank. Uh, yes. So more and more work being done in Jerusalem, UAE. The Arabs have completely coerced to Israel completely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. UAE and Israel can cooperate on some areas. <laughs> you know, some areas. <laughs> that's just uh, you know, that's just uh, it's shameful. It's <laughs> absolutely shameful. Uh, and it shows how how compromised the leaders are, or how deluded they are, or maybe they're not deluded. They're they're working hand in hand along with the enemies of Allah, and they don't give a damn anymore. Yeah. You see? And um, what you said here a few moments ago that they are uh, this is what Scripture calls a strong de delusion. And the Quran does, says this, and the al Torah says it, New Testament's even there too, uh, that the people who have a reprobate mind, this disease of the heart that runs so deep that Allah has forgotten their case, mm. all right, he hands them over to shaitan, he hands them over to Ibis and says, here, they're yours, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, this, these people actually think that they're doing good. Mm. Now, some of them at the very top, they know that they're wicked, wicked. they know they're uh, going to hell, but they don't care anymore. Others actually think they're doing good. If you talk to the lower degree Jesuits, uh, and not the upper degree who are, are completely given over, uh, but the lower degree Jesuits, they, they really think they're serving God. Okay. Yeah, I think that is do, a very important point because it's in human nature to want to do good. So yeah. shaitan is not going to make you go against your fitrah. Right? No, he, right? he, in a he, sense. he, he turns he's it. Gonna, he, he's going to use that goodwill you have in his yeah. way. Yeah. He's going to make you exactly. buy into his false promises. Yes. And 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 you're going to give your you're going to think you're doing good. Mm -hmm. In the name of security or in the name of, uh, you know, whatever it is, right? This, this, is, this is what's happening now in America to a lot of your people in uniform. Uh, and it's one of the reasons they kill themselves, because they feel compromised uh, because of this fetra, which has been misguided and then abused and misused. And they've used their... Uh, their their will, their desire to to do their best for God and country, and they've used it to commit evil deeds. Mm -hmm. See, and th there's no reconciliation here without Talba, and there's no Talba without understanding Islam as it really and truly is. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and that's nothing more than submission to the will of God, because that's what Islam is. You see, mm. forget this religious connotation of the term, For even forget the, 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 the idea of Muslim here. Let's just keep in mind the idea of serving God, okay, mm. and being devoted to God and to divine will and to doing your best to be a moral human being, mm. okay. And this is what people want to do. And for the most part, they're misguided. And now we find that the Muslims who think they know the truth, they're also misguided. Mm. This, this, no, this, uh, this headline you just say here about UAE, the, the entire country is misguided. All those tribes are misguided. Mm. Okay. And when judgment falls upon their leaders, this is the same divine principle here, 
that happens when a drunk when a drunk when a lady married to a drunk gets into a car driven by her husband the drunk with mm. her children okay mm. the judgment that falls on him is going to fall on her and the kids okay that's just the way it goes that yeah. is your uh, dick that that is your measure I mm. forgot the word uh, the other or the decree there yeah that's the decree and this decree is a divine law it cannot be altered the only way to alter is to redeem yourself and this is what Cain Kabil refused to do he refused to redeem himself by Talba mm. Allah would have taken him back into the fold even though he murdered his brother even though he lied about it, all he had to do was commit tauba, mm. and he refused to do this. This is the way of Kabil. This is the way of the new world order. These mm. people have gone their way, and they've gone their way so far. They've forgotten. You know, they dismiss anything that has to do with correct morality. Morality. And so we have COVID nineteen cases in the U.S. And they're calling it the second wave. COVID nineteen <laughs> update. The second wave has begun. Oh dear. And uh, so, you know, the numbers of cases were going down, and now that they have these phases, so phase two, we're in phase two of, you know, uh, mingling with each other. And of course, these protests are going on. And so now the cases have risen in states, mind you, that didn't really have it before as much. And okay. India is going to have more COVID cases, they're saying, than even the US. So India is really in trouble because it, it has a lot of internal turmoil with the Muslims, with other minorities, uh, with China, with Pakistan. And uh, by the way, um, uh, you might be interested in knowing this, uh, that Indian, uh, Indian uh, nationalism, they have a word for it that I don't remember, but they have a, a foreign policy. Hindutva, yes. One of their policies is not to have a good relationship with your borders, but to have a good relationship with the people who have a good relationship with your borders. So they don't mind uh, having a bad relationship with Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, China, uh, Bangladesh, but they want a good relationship with Iran, Russia, and, and all the other periphery countries mm -hmm. that are bordering, there was a research done on uh, Hindu foreign policy in, it, in relationship to its religion. And this was one of the, the main points that I thought was interesting. Uh, they've had this for centuries, this idea, this concept. Uh, and I can give you uh, the sources of that because I, you might be interested in that. But COVID-19 all over the place again, second wave. Uh, I don't know how what you have to say about that and the economy. Yeah, the, the whole COVID-19 thing is a farce. It's a scam. <laughs> uh, this virus exists, but it's not as dangerous as people make it out to be. And areas where there are higher risk cases are amongst populations that are already sick and would have died from the normal run of any normal flu and have died in higher numbers in, in, in recent years. Mm. So, and this COVID, this coronavirus, this is the flu virus, that's what it is. The, mm. the whole thing is blown out of co proportion. And uh, I'm, I'm su really surprised that the medical personnel are, are, are going along with this because it, it doesn't make any medical sense. Mm. Uh, I'm not saying that there isn't something called the COVID uh, virus. There is, there obviously is, but it's all blown out of proportion. And I don't believe anything that the, the mainstream media is feeding us on this, especially government officials. Mm. They're feeding into a propaganda campaign, which is herding the goyim, the cattle, the stupid cattle, mm -hmm. into, uh, into corrals out of fear. Hmm. What are they fearing? They're fearing death. Oh, my God. Oh, we're going to hmm. die. Yeah. You were born to die, you fool. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you see? Um, 
So uh, this, they're just, they're just, uh, this thing is blown out of proportion. Don't believe any of these numbers that they're giving you. Right, right, right. We already, we point. already yes. know from from very reliable sources that mm-hmm. all of these numbers, including the official numbers by the official health institutions. You know, the CDC and whatnot, the WHO, they've all been discredited already. Hmm. The government reports have leaked out. Uh, medical personnel have come forth and said, look, we're being forced to do this. We're being forced to lie. We don't have any choice. Da, 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 da. It's all a lie. Okay. Especially this thing about the mask. This, this thing about the mask is to force you to conform. Anyone not wearing a mask now, there are people who've been shot for not wearing a mask. Mm. <clears throat> this is how dangerous the thing is. And this is how stupid people have become. Mm. So it's a very dangerous situation. I'm not saying, dis- no, don't, dis- don't, I'm not saying to discount it. Mm. I am saying you can't trust what they're saying. Right. They are fomenting more and more chaos. And they're doing it on purpose because they want to control the population absolutely they're forcing people out of business yeah all of, the, all of these small business owners who were relatively independent even under the heavy taxation systems and legal systems that we have to cope with they're all going out of business everyone's going to be standing on the bread line by uh-huh. the end of this year I mean, the, the, the middle class is the one that's being hurt because yes. the, the, the poor people are going to get their checks, which is going to be just about equal or more than they were making before. <laughs> and the rich people are going to be fine. But the middle class and the, the, the middle class business owners, they're, they're going to be in a very and, and, and uh, you know, in a very difficult situation. <clears throat> Entire police department resigns at once. Saying, it's saying town seemingly cares so little about us. I mean, this is chaos. Well, the police have been trained by the Israeli uh, defense yes. forces for decades now. They've been turned into murderers. And, uh, and there was always this thin line anyway, psychologically, between the policeman and the criminal. And uh, the oh, very good Israeli... Point. This, the Israeli defor- defense forces just pushed them over the line and have uh, convinced the police forces it's us or them. Now, mm. there are amongst them a few men and a few ladies who were trying to serve the community, but they're already in- involved in a corporate system that does not have the community's interest at heart. The laws are there to preserve the elite not to preserve the community, okay? So these people are compromised from the very beginning. And even those who are the Billy Buds of, amongst them, the, the Sir Lancelot and the La Mancha people who want to really and truly do what is right, they're all compromised and they all know it. You see, uh, we, we hear so many stories about them running running down a criminal and then coming up against a legal system that just turns them loose. Mm. See? And what are these leaders doing? They're turning the criminals back out on the street. So the, the police are already pulling their hair out. The cops are already pulling their hair out before any of this happens. And then it, it, it comes to a head here with this story. They say, oh, I don't know my history. Yes, I do, dear brother. <laughs> I do. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now that this whole Farrakhan and uh, what's his name, his leader, Mohammed, whatever his name was, Mm -hmm. and going all the way back to Fard, they were all Freemasons. Mm. And there's a definite uh, fatwa, two fatwas that I know of, uh, passed against by uh, Freemasonry by major Islamic traditionalist organizations and all for the right reasons calling Mm -hmm. Freemasonry absolutely wicked and evil. That's what it is. Mm. But Farrakhan, Farrakhan and his group, they're they're supporting it. Mm. Sorry. Don't talk to me about this group. All right. If they're supporting this, they're under the influence of shaitan. Mm. Iblis has got them right where he wants them in Mm. this vain delusion. Okay. Mm. So, uh, 
and they want to, they want to support this how all right, black lives matter okay please calm down take another look at this thing all right and see what's really and truly happened here forget all this business about the confederacy and the lynching yes all of that happened but my dad didn't do that neither did my grandfather okay? right just, just like when I sat with the Sioux Indians and they started blaming it on me, okay? The young men started blaming it on me. They started saying, oh, you did this, you did that, you did the next thing. And I said, no, I didn't. I said, neither did my father, neither did my grandfather. My grandfather was still in Poland when when you guys uh, 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 had your last stand there with Custer, okay? My people had nothing to do with this. So don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't blame it on me. It's not my fault. Hmm. And the chief who heard this conversation, he uh, 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 he stood me up in the circle that we were in, and he removed me. He took me out to my car. He said, you stay here. Hmm. Okay. And I got into my car. He posted a guard outside my car. Hmm. Okay. And I had to stay there in the car all night. And it was in the middle of a blizzard. I was hmm. in two sleeping bags in my car in the middle of South Dakota after that conversation. Okay. Hmm. So this is who you're dealing with, black Muslim. Okay. Hmm. I didn't do it to you. Neither did my father. Get over it. All right. Hmm. Deal with the truth of the matter. Okay. And you can't see the truth because you're involved in the delusion. Okay. And, Ma and Malcolm X tried to pull you out of the delusion, but you followed a liar. Mm. You followed a liar and you're still following him. And you're calling yourself Muslim? Uh, forget it. Forget it. You've got a problem with the death angel. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely death true. Angel. Malcolm X put the onus on the, his own people that they yes, have to shape yes, up and they need I, to get it right i'm not saying anything different than he did okay so uh and uh, if you can't measure up to malcolm x find somebody who does and then follow his example mm. okay and it ain't it is not louis farrakhan he murdered him okay and we all know that so Everyone. now uh, at the end i want to put everything together the situation Sorry, in the U.S., the situation in China, the situation in India, the situation oh, in Turkey, the situation with Israel, and the, what the Arab world is doing, and just, mm. where are we? Lost. Lost. The whole world is lost. And uh, this, is, uh, this is what's taking place, and everybody's trying to analyze this in terms of... of uh, academic political science and you can go there but that's not going to help you see the forest <laughs> yeah. you won't you won't see it yeah. you only see the trees you'll see the leaves you'll see some of the rotten roots uh, uh this you'll see some of the bad uh, 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 water sources and all this sort of thing uh, those things will not solve the problem yes they're very systematic and they're very analytical and they do analyze human nature as it is but there's nothing divine about it okay mm -hmm. there's nothing eschatolog eschatolog uh, uh, i can't say the word eschatological about it okay without yeah. eschatology you cannot see this and if you don't accept the even the what the so-called uh, christian eschatology it melds with the Islamic eschatology, hand in glove, okay, hmm. when you read it correctly, okay. <clears throat> so what's taking place is the whole world is lost, and it's getting, can I use this word, loster? <laughs> lost <-er. laughs> okay. yeah. I'm trying to teach my grandson the ER element of the English language. He, he's getting it now, so he, he uses terms like that now. Oh, he's lost her, Papa! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, the world is becoming more and more enmeshed in 
uh, chaos theory, in game theory. Mm. All right, these people are creating the chaos as part of their game. They're sitting back behind their oaken desks and their oaken doors, and they're pushing the buttons that are on their test yard. They're, they're, they're playing chess at, you know, 13 different levels. Uh, and there are those amongst them uh, who are absolutely dispassionate about what's taking place. They have absolutely no empathy. And these are psychopaths. Okay. Mm. And they have sociopaths working for them because sociopaths are generally more organized than the psychopathic mindset. The psychopathic mindset just, just reacts mm. like an animal. animal okay? You push them into the corner. If you remove their facade, you're a dead man. Okay? If you mm. do it under the wrong circumstances, they will slice your throat in a second mm. and, and, and not think about it. Matter of fact, uh, if you have something they want and they really want it badly, they'll slice your throat anyway. So <laughs> these are the people who are running the world. Um, so, and they have politicians who are confused, like Trump, working for them. Okay, Trump is really a, a very, very confused man. Okay, yeah, and uh, he he he's he's lived all his life playing this sort of uh, elitist game. And I uh, thinking the Jesuits have led him, you know, right along this uh, criminal. He was he was educated by them, and uh, they led him along this path. And he's being used, and and now he's he's being used to divide the country. You see how they they're dividing the country in terms of being loyal to Trump. And nobody's talking about being loyal to the country or to the office of the presidency. It's loyalty to Trump. You see, and. You know, and, and you've got this point, you've got this uh, situation now, which is unheard of, uh, where you have a liberal left-wing Bolshevik mob armed taking over the center city in Seattle. Mm. I, and I'm asking, where are the good old boys? Mm. Where, where is the local militia? They should have been mowed down last week, mm. these people. That place should have been cleared. If the cops mm. didn't want to do it, the men on the street should have done it. Mm. So what I'm saying is they're all talk, you see. They're scared. Everybody's scared. Everybody's talking this big, old, let's get ready to fight thing. And when it comes push the shove, they don't. Mm. They don't. They run away. They run away and hide. And so this, uh, this thing that uh, Mount Setung was afraid of, there being a gun behind every bush, if you or the Japanese emperor, the Japanese uh, general was afraid of invading uh, 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 America, did there's going to be a gun behind every bush? Well, that was true. You know, two generations ago, it's not true anymore. Mm. It's not. It's just not true anymore. Mm. See, Seattle is proving it. You mm. see, what's going on there is proof. It's proof of the pudding. This is what happened in Moscow, in St. Petersburg, a oh, hundred years ago, when the communists took over. This is what happened, okay? And so this, what's taking place is the people are, are lost. They don't know what to do. They don't know who to turn to. There's no legitimate authority to turn to anymore. Especially in the U.S., it seems like, because the political divide between the Democrats and Republicans has never been worse. Yes. Meaning from, from the perspective of the individuals who don't know that they're being played. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Republicans hate the Democrats. The Democrats hate the Republicans. The whole country is divided. And in the, in, in the course of this, you got COVID. And in the course of this, you got these riots. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have the economic fallout that's happening it's uh, it's um looks like uh to me that uh, you know things are not headed in a very positive direction very very well, quickly albert pike made it very clear in the letter that he wrote to uh Martini, the fellow who took over after he died and the fellow who established the mafia in italy the mafia was already there. He just organized it, okay, mm. in in a much more sophisticated manner than it already was. Um, Pike said that 
there will be, he, he predicted three world wars. Now, this is not new knowledge, but I'm just going to reiterate it for the sake of your audience. Maybe there's some who haven't heard this. Uh, but he said the third one is predominantly against the Muslims mm. because they're the final force to be defeated. Okay. Now, the Muslims have got a lot of problems. One thing they've got right is the, uh, the, the, the relationship of mankind to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've got everything else wrong, but they've got that right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> over the I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I really don't understand it. You know, the there are the Quran says, "My servant uh, who dwells close to me," uh, and the closer he gets, the closer I get to him. I become his eyes. I become his ears. When he throws, I throw with him. Okay, something happened to the Muslims. This kind of leader is gone. Mm. What happened to them? No one can answer me because nobody's asked the question. You see, mm. these are aspects of Islam that Muslims are avoiding, including the alim. They're avoiding the questions. Mm. They're avoiding the questions that I've asked certain Sufis about. What is this knowledge that the Prophet passed on to his inner circle that should be used to defend the uh, Ummah? Mm. Why? Why isn't it being used mm. when the Muslims have nobody's answering this question? So, but having said that, I will say this: the Muslims at least got their position right with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. At least they are not worshiping vain gods. At least not knowingly. Okay. So, Albert Pike said they've got to go. This is the last group that's got to be fought. And he said, this war is going to be so terrible that people are going to beg for a Messiah mm. bring peace again. Okay. Mm. It will be a war that's worse than anybody can imagine. Things mm. are going to get so bad. Okay. And this is, this is what they're planning. Okay. They're Many planning. Muslim contemporary uh, scholars have said that uh, I, I don't know anybody of the tra tra from a traditional perspective have said this, but many contemporary Islamic scholars have said that the the malhama, the great wars that will happen, and what will happen after that, that a big portion of the human population will be decreased. Yeah. Meaning, by the time the Mahdi is there, and by the time Isa is there, it's it's not like what it is today. It's going to be yeah. a much smaller. Apparently. Uh, apparently, this is this is the case, and they're planning on this. And, and uh, some of them think they're going to survive it. Maybe some of them will. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not going to speculate uh, you know, about those matters. But I do know that it's being planned. We do know what the eschatology is. We maybe we don't know the timeline down to the you know details. But I don't think that's important. I think what's important is to realize that it's coming, and you had better prepare for it, uh, both outwardly if you can, but inwardly you better be prepared, okay? That's more important. Yeah, and in that sense, you know, the more time we have, the better, <laughs> because it's a lot of work. Uh, well, has you, to you, have, you have some time to prepare, but you don't have any time to waste, dear brother, mm. okay? There's no time to waste anymore. For people like me, I'm already 70. My, my life is over. I, I can't do much more to prepare uh, other than the way I'm preparing for this moment is I'm doing my very best on a daily basis to keep people informed so that they understand what is coming, why it is coming, and why there is no solution at hand. Okay, mm. There really is no solution at hand. So... This means that you have to make peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now. Mm. And this asakina has to be maintained in your immediate environment, mm. right, to the best of your ability. Uh, because what counts when we die is the good deeds that we've performed. And the best venue for performing good deeds is at home. 
right mm. where you are, at home. Yes. It's not out in the street. Mm. Okay, that's already sold. It's already mm -hmm. mortgaged to Iblis and yeah. his people. Okay, um, so the best venue is in the home. So do what you can to preserve your asakina at home, at home. Mm. And then you branch out from there to your neighbors, those mm. who are sharing this, uh, this vision. The other people who don't share this vision, you can't do anything for them. You can be kind to them, da 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 da, but they 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 cannot be invited to your inner circle because they will only disturb your asakina. Yeah. Okay. You, you and, understand? And people of my age that are in their thirties and forties, uh, I yeah. I really thought yesterday the note that you ended on, which was the words "save the seed," protect the seed. Yes, protect the uh, seed. That is probably number one thing that I can see, you know, yeah. I mean, we're like a small flower that can be crushed any time, you know, I mean, I'm talking about the brothers and sisters you, that are around us, you do what and, you and, do what you and so the, the, the most important thing is to protect the coming seed, Yeah. And maybe allow, allow them to do something. Let, let, me, let me just paint a, an imagination here. Protecting the seed may be to the extent where you actually take your children up into the mountains and hand them over to the natives. Okay, you understand? Yeah. That may be the only way you can protect the seed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I'm, I, this is not an extreme uh, example. This has happened. Okay. Mm. This happens in the human experience. It's the mm. only way that the seed can be saved. So you do what you can to protect the seed. So if there's a vision that you're, you're having right now, pray for Allah to show you how to protect the seed if he wants to preserve it. Yes. Maybe he does not want, want to preserve the seed, in which case you just prepare to die. Okay? But prepare to die in peace. Okay? Mm. Uh, cow Allah hates cowards. He hates cowards, mm. okay? And cowards are the ones who run to the enemy. Mm. You know, they're turning their back on the enemy, but actually they're helping the enemy. That's what they mm. do. When mm. they turn their back on the enemy, they're helping the enemy. This mm. is what the Ummah is doing, mm. okay? <laughs> they're helping the enemy by turning their back on what is immoral, within their own camp hmm. you see? the it so it takes courage to to say the correct things to speak the truth and and to then defend it and be ready to die for it hmm. you see? if you're not ready to die for it then you know just go hide go sit down in a coffee shop and hide with your brothers with the shishka pipe okay yeah. so that's what you're doing isn't it <laughs> sure. Oh, Dr. Omar, you're so off. <laughs> <laughs> Former Egyptian prime minister read my book, The Hand of Evis, and he said, I'm brutally honest. Yeah. So, mm. was, the so was the prophet. So is the yes. prophet. It's brutally honest. It's not a nice piece of art. It's brutal, intergalactic, cosmic honesty. <laughs> yeah, inshallah. Uh, I think uh, that was a good session, mashallah. So um, we'll end here for today. Okay. Uh, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.